Now to discuss is pollster and communications strategist Frank Luntz. Uh, Frank, thanks so much for joining us. I always love having you on because I, I learn a lot uh, from what you're learning from just talking to so many voters. And I wonder if you'll just start us off with where you see and what you're hearing about this moment in this race. I take this very seriously. And I'm actually prepared for this segment. And some of the things, half the people are going to be angry at half the things that I say. The issue agenda is set. It is going to be, and it's not the economy, it's affordability, it's prices, it's costs. That and inflation are the two key issues. Those are going to drive this last 23 days. And frankly, Donald Trump has the advantage on both. And on immigration, the reason why he wants to talk about immigration is because the, pre the current president, President Biden and Vice President Harris, seem so weak on the issue. I will raise this point carefully, that to the average American calling for the death penalty for someone who's here illegally, killing a cop is not insane. It's not left, it's not uh, uh, abusive. It's exactly what the left, the center, and the right would call for. That Trump, and I realize that he's gone off the rails in some of his statements, and you can replay them to your viewers right now. But there's a reason why he's going up and that he's recovering after one of the worst debate performances in modern history. It's because he is speaking the language of the average American and she still isn't coming clean about where she stands on some issues and what she's all about. And it is a genuine problem for her campaign. And I understand why Democrats are getting frustrated because there are key groups right now, Latinos, young African-American men and union members that are traditionally with the Democrats that aren't in this campaign right now. And and on that. Hey guys, so I'm back home. I'll get into another video of what's going on with my house and all of that. But this morning I tried to live stream the interview that Kamala Harris did with the Breakfast Club, basically, you know, to gerrymander the black vote, which, oh my God, this was probably her worst, not probably, it is her, her worst interview. It has the comments on it. It is just destroying not only the show, but her, the host, everything about it. And it is, it is insane. The backlash that has come from this, the questions that were asked, the answers she gave pure lies. Now she's a praying woman of God that grew up in the black church. They even brought a black pastor on it's when I tell you this race pandering at the highest level that no one is falling for. I mean, it is unreal. But the problem is I could not live stream. They cut off my stream twice. I had to go into X, which I don't even use, but just so I can get the information out there. It's because they kept trying to copyright it and stop my stream because it's weird. I'm black. I'm a woman. This was supposed to be for me. Why can't I do commentary on this. Don't you want this to go out or do you only want positivity and joy and hope and change to go out? But I plan on getting some clips and trying to put that together because you must see it. I mean, must, I don't, if you're not, it doesn't matter if you're black or not, does not matter. Okay. It is that bad. Like that bad, like the code switch, the, the accent, the language, everything about it this is the worst pandering I've ever seen any politician do. It is worse than Hillary Clinton hot sauce. It is horrendous from the start to the end. But what I wanted to bring up with this is, you know, this, this guy, you know, Frank Luntz, he does the polling. I've brought in videos about him before. Some people don't believe in polls. Some people do. I do think the polls are mostly accurate. Yes, there is a margin of error, but I do believe that the polling does tell the trend. OK, um, 2016 was an anomaly because because Trump was an anomaly. And there's some things where, you know, things could be a little bit off, but it is it's going to be in the margin of error. And this is why they're sounding the alarm as Democrats. This is why they're trying to pander now to black men in the black vote. This is why they're trying to, you know, she's doing more interviews. Remember, she didn't need to do any, any interviews. That's what her her team and, and all of her operatives were saying. She's doing great, but they weren't realizing it's the honeymoon. They thought the high, the sugar high would continue. But now 
that this pollster, he's bringing up doing these, these um, Zoom calls and I'm on other Zoom calls I go into, I try to really dig deep to find you guys information that you may not see so much, you know, on mainstream or there's so many things to view. Um, I wanna bring this up because this is an important information as to why Kamala Harris is losing right now. And she is 100% losing. I don't care who tries to spin it. I have a video with Joy Reid that I am going to, I'm going to destroy her because this is the most, Joy Reid has the most outrageous take on the polls. Now she doesn't believe it. It's all Republican polls. Republicans are like skewing the polls. Like it is really far out there, blue MAGA, tenfold derangement. So, but with this, pay attention. And this is the thing that you need to, you need to, to see. They are losing everywhere. Even young white women, she's not getting the shares of, that any other Democrat has gotten of any of the voting blocks. Her call her daddy podcast she did, I did a reaction to that, that that actually, that she has huge, the huge backlash. The girl who hosts that, Oh my gosh, the like to dislike ratio, it's like 80% dislike. You go to her Instagram, they're killing her on the Instagram. And these are young white women. So they're trying to blame, you know, black men or men in general. They blame different voting blocks. Everything, they blame everything but themselves. Everything but having a weak and horrible candidate in Kamala Harris. And they keep talking about Donald Trump is going to destroy democracy and, and do all these things. But yeah, they have this woman up there as they're supposed to lead the country and she cannot answer a question straight. It's the more I watch of her, the I, I just grow more shocked by the moment of how insane the things she says, the things that come out of her mouth are. And so guys, I always say I'm independent. So I like to dive deep. I don't just like to go on the surface and see what, you know, what the headlines are. I like to dig deep. And this is one of those videos. Make sure you subscribe to my channel here, Melanie King and my new channel, Melanie Off Script. The link will be below. Doing a lot of reactions over there. You're not going to miss. And let's get into it. No. Now, Frank, we, we've seen recent polls showing Harris's support among black men is 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 lower uh, than certainly where, where Biden was. I know you hosted a focus group with black men who are supporting Trump. I want to play a clip from that. The reason why I'm voting for Donald Trump is because simply I want to make America great again. Mm. I think the last four years we have <laughs> seen over promising um, without a plan. What I watched on the debate stage were a lot of lofty goals from a Democratic candidate who's been vice president of the United States for three years and what, eight months? And nothing that she proposed she or, or, or spoke on, she had a plan attached. That's so interesting, Frank. Give us some more context around that conversation you had. It's not that they're pro-Republican because they aren't. But Donald Trump reaches them in a personal and a human way. They feel uh, victimized by the federal government. They feel like they're attacked or, or even persecuted for being black men. And they believe that Donald Trump understands their plight more than Harris does. That this uh, challenge, this economic challenge, this social challenge, this racial challenge, they see more in Trump's language and his willingness to fight and beat the system, they see more in themselves in that fight than they do in Harris because they see her as representing voters who maybe they don't work, maybe they're of a different gender, but it's not who they are. It's the same thing with union membership where the rank and file absolutely are moving towards Trump at the same moment that the leadership are overwhelmingly, maybe 90% endorsing Harris. And among Latino votes, you have that schism as well, where it's not what he says about illegals, because if you're here legally, you agree with what Donald Trump is saying. I know this is blowing people's minds right now, but I want to emphasize that this looks to me just like Hillary Clinton's campaign in 2016, where voters woke up the next day to a Trump presidency. Harris is miscalculated. She's miscalibrated. And it's causing damage to her campaign. So we're three weeks out from Election Day. Early voting started in some places. It's about to start in others. Is there time to recalibrate for Harris, in your opinion? Absolutely. The best example is when asked, does she have any differences with Joe Biden? She says no. 
The first thing should have said, she should have said is, on the border, I do disagree. I do think that we've made some mistakes, and here's how we're going to correct them. But she's not willing to do that. Hillary Clinton played it safe in the last 28 days of the election, not engaging with the press, not engaging with voters, and Harris is doing exactly the same thing, and it's going to have the same impact if she doesn't change that strategy. She's trying to now engage with the voters now that her, you know, she can't just sit back and make speeches on the teleprompter and, and, and just, you know, hide away. Now she's going and doing different interviews and they're all bombing. Every single one is bombing and her polling gets worse. The more she talks, the more people get to know her. She is just a horrific candidate. Period. I don't care how you vote. I don't care, you know, you're Democrat, Republican. I'm just speaking in political terms, being a political nerd. She's one of the worst candidates in American history. It is that bad. And so the fact that the Democrats think that people by and large are just going to buy it and that they could, you know, don't have to engage and actually provide real solutions while she is currently part of the administration and keep lying and blaming everything is Trump's fault in her administration. Everything's Trump's fault. Oh, she's the VP, so she doesn't have any power. When she's lockstep, she said she's been in on every major decision that the Biden administration has made. She will change nothing. He didn't make any mistakes. Everything is perfect. She's just going to continue the same thing. And then the things that she promises, they're just like Disney wishes. There's nothing hard policy. It's bizarre that they thought that this would, you know, work with the American people. But actually it's not because it has in the past, especially when their goal is to segregate people into different groups and that the Latinos are going to vote for me. The blacks are going to vote for me. You know, the gays are going to vote for me. The, the women are going to vote for me. Like they try to segment the population. And now that people are not voting as a monolith, they don't know what to do because they're used to just having racial division and get in line and, 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 and Trump, Trump bad. That is literally the only thing they talk about. Project 2025. Trump is bad. He's going to ruin democracy like over and over and over and over again while offering no real solutions, but fear. And my other thought here is just, we talk a lot about persuadable voters, people that still could go back or forth. Uh, some theories of the case are there really aren't m many of those anymore. It's about turning out your voters at this point. Um, but because she is in this unique position, Harris, being still so fresh in this race because of this wild campaign season we've had, it's, it seems as if she's still defining herself to people. And Trump, as we just saw in that clip I played, we, that Elena played leading in here, is still desperately trying to define her as well. He's unplugged, for better or worse. He's speaking what he truly believes, for better or worse. And some voters, undecided voters, have turned off to that because they're turned off to that rhetoric. But he's actually speaking, and I say this as clearly as I can, he's using language on prices and on immigration that the public responds to. It's not insane. It actually is a majority of Americans. And the Harris campaign so disagrees with it, so disagrees with the strategy and the policies that they are miscalibrated to how to win them over. And one last point, it really isn't the undecided right now, I accept that. Those people at three or 4% probably won't decide. They will probably stay home or they'll, they'll vote for a third party or write someone in. The key now is turning out your partisans. She has the most incredible, intense support among young, young women, 18 to 30. But Trump's vote overall is damn well determined to vote. They will stand in line. They will do whatever it takes. And even in that intensity at this moment, he's got a very, very slight advantage. Mm. And just before I let you go, I do want to touch on something that continues to bear out in a lot of this polling. And I'm, I would imagine, you'll tell me, in focus group as, as well, but, but this gender gap that we keep seeing show up again and again and again. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? And, and give us some nuance around it beyond just there's a gender gap. That is the question of this campaign. That's going to be what historians focus on. She has driven female vote to, to incredible levels, and particularly younger women. Trump has done the same for older men. So you have this conflict 
And it is not just about issues. It really is about attributes, how Trump presents himself and how Harris presents herself. She is a role model for younger women. Trump is saying and almost screaming exactly what older men feel. So this is going to be a problem. Here's the issue. I'm afraid that we're not going to know who won this election on election night, and we're not going to know the next night, and we're not going to know even the night after that. CNN and organizations like yours need to start now. Okay, so he's going into something else. But I wanted to point out that, you know, everything, everybody is signaling how she is losing and that everything that she's doing is not working and why Trump is actually resonating with a lot of voters. Again, I'm going to keep saying it. I don't care who doesn't like it. I'm independent. But I like to look at what is going on beneath the surface and not what's on mainstream media. There have been, for 10 years, they have been going in on every detail, every drop that that Trump does, everything that he does. But no one gives the same scrutiny to the Democrat side. They do not give the same scrutiny to Kamala Harris. And they surely didn't do it for Biden when they all knew uh, that he was mentally gone. They all knew. The media, as well as all the Democrats, they knew it, but they tried to, they just thought we were too stupid to really see it. But once the debate put it on full display and they could no longer say that, well, then they had to take him out. And now they're saying, no, 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 it's, it's Trump that has a cognitive decline. While Biden is still the president and we don't know where this man is. He's at the beach sundowning somewhere, going, eating supper at 430 and going to bed. It's deranged. They really think they were stupid, but they it's its like they're operating their campaign as though social media doesn't exist, as though independent people don't exist to look these things up, to talk about these things. Mainstream media is not where everyone is getting their news anymore. And that is why you see these numbers pulling away from key demographics that the Democrat Party has relied on to vote for them. And they're now being turned completely off. But with that, guys, make sure you are subscribed to my other channel, Melanie Offscript. The link will be below and I will see you on the next one. Bye.